Hello, beautiful souls. Oh, it's so good to be back here with you all right now. I'm Aurora Light. This is the Radiant Evolution Collective's Illumination Series. And I'm here with my beautiful evolutionary partners, Nina Infinity and Nicole Rose, Radiant Soul Nicole. And I'm just taking a moment to make this public so people can share it. Because I always want to make it friends only, but strangers are just friends you haven't met yet, right? So we should be able to share that out now. And uh, I am so excited to talk about opportunities with my beautiful soul sisters here, because uh, the three of us right now are really feeling this energy. But not everybody is. A lot of energy in the world right now is feeling really chaotic and really dense. And a lot of people are feeling a lot of stickiness or a lot of stuff coming up. And I mean, haven't we for the last couple of years, it just feels like it's been nonstop, but we're going to speak about the opportunities that we have as humans, alchemists to turn shit into gold to take all of that density and the stuff that feels like it is weighing us down and actually transmute it and make it the very thing that allows us to move forward um, and in leaps and bounds. So I'm so excited to chat with you ladies. It's been a while since we have been live. So welcome. Thank you. Yes, it has been a while and it feels like two weeks feels like years now, honestly. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so happy to be back to talk about turning this shit into gold because life just is so much more enjoyable when you have the ability to do that and look at you know, things that are triggers or challenging as uh catalysts for transformation and the opportunity to grow and learn and evolve and i so appreciate the both of you as my evolutionary partners in life <laughs> as we uh yeah grow and evolve and have this wonderful ability to look at our own shit and you know take what we can to use that as fertilizer to change and grow we're probably going to make this one a PG-13 episode, so if you have tiny ears around, just a warning. Um, I do use that language in front of my tiny human and just teach her the context, but that is not how everyone rolls, and you get to do you, so you might want to pop in headphones if you are listening around little people, because we, we want to talk about the shit, because it's a really versatile world. And it really helps us to feel what we mean when we're talking about that density. Right. So just sorry to interrupt. Nina, I'd love to hear your intro, but um, yeah, just just going to throw that warning out there. Good call. Um, it makes me giggle. This is just a side side note. It makes me giggle when people are like swearing isn't spiritual. And I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's just words, people. It's just the charge that we give, it, give to them. But yet some people don't want their young ones learning those words so all good very good uh disclaimer so for me um hmm. ah, there's so much that has been that i've been remembering lately about what i've turned into gold from the challenging experiences that have, has aris have arisen in my life that have as I look back on them have been such blessings and gifts. I just got back from a beautiful women's retreat and in it, we were actually reflecting on some of those things that we've, um, that have been those most challenging times of our lives and being on the other, on the other side of them, I'm just so grateful for them. Um, you know, a past relationship that was really challenging for me. Now that I'm on the other side of it, I can say thank you to that person. And I can say, I'm so grateful for, how it shifted and changed me and helped me to really see by looking at the relationship, how I was looking for love outside of myself and how it had, it, it, it sucked <laughs> at the time, really sucked, but it really illuminated codependent tendencies within myself and 
eliminated this opportunity that I had to really like hold myself to really come into a, a place of embodying that inner divine masculine for myself and that inner mother and really holding space holding my heart holding that inner child and telling her what she was longing to hear and now I'm in this place where so often most mornings I wake up and I put my arms around myself and I say I love you and I imagine these beautiful wings wrapping around me and I'm learning how to give love to myself that I so longed from a partner before and I dreamt of you know waking up and cuddling them was like now I wake up and I cuddle myself but if it weren't for these experiences that were so painful it wouldn't have pushed me towards embodying that sovereignty for myself and embodying that inner divine masculine and feminine so that I can give it to myself and receive and so now I mean and there's so many more experiences like that in the in that I've had in the past where it fucking sucked in the moment but moving forward now as, as, as I have those challenges arise in my life I, I keep it in the back of my mind of like the you know the triggers in the past have always been catalysts for me so it helps me to trust as I move forward into like okay this is how is this happening for me what lessons are arising for me what is this teaching me and I, I'm able to move through it faster because I have that um, lived experience of leaning into trusting it I loved feeling that as you were describing it, the wings just coming and cuddling you and it felt so good. I love how you brought in that reparenting, which is so, so good for us to bring up because as we're moving through all of the crap, all of the shit, all of that really hard stuff, as adults especially, we typically don't have somebody in our lives that will tell us everything we need and give us all of the love and the support that we crave in those hard times. And if you're lucky, you do. But but most of us, especially the friends that I know, the world changers, the change makers, the light workers, the grid workers, a lot of us chose to incarnate into families where we don't really have that, that closeness. And even if you did, even if your parents are the greatest people in the world, um, they're still not mind readers, right? Like they don't know exactly what you need in that moment. And so being able to do that reparenting and speaking those words to your heart, so powerful. So I'm so excited you have that practice now, Nina. And I want to give another disclaimer to people. So the three of us have been practicing doing this kind of work of alchemizing the challenges and shifting our perspective and seeing it as an opportunity and really being able to look at what is this happening, um, what's happening for me for years. So if you're I at a disclaimer to people, <laughs> if you are at a place where that seems like, whoa, that is a lot, like that seems crazy. That's okay, right? It's one step at a time. And it's easier to do with things that we're looking back at, right? So if you look back at maybe the job you got fired from, your very first job, or the relationship that you had 10, 15 years ago, maybe your first love, and it didn't work out, you can go, oh, wow, I really see how that actually shifted me, catalyzed me into the direction I needed to go. I learned those lessons. And with the hindsight, we can appreciate it a lot more easily than being in the moment and having stuff come at you, shit come at you, and being able to go, okay, this is obviously a lesson, let me look for the gift right here, right now, as we're moving through it. So no matter what stage of that process you were on, of being able to see the silver lining and immediately look for the lesson for the gift for all of that, that's fine. You're going to get something out of this talk anyway. But I really want to just mention that we are not speaking into bypassing the feelings, that is not what we are talking about at all. When you're going through this process, even if you're able to, like me, this is my superpower, see the opportunity in the challenges as they're unfolding, you still got to be with your feelings and let the human part of you run them through your body so they don't get stuck. 
Okay. So we are not talking about spiritual bypassing. We're talking about being multidimensional and being able to feel the feelings, hold the body, support the body, nurture it. Like Nina was saying, and also have that zoomed out galactic or higher self perspective of where this is going and being able to see the opportunity within that and transmute everything while we're present in all of us as all of us with all of who we are as a human and a divine being. Okay, that's my second disclaimer. I think that's probably good. <laughs> just wanted to say that when you're speaking of that, that is such a um, beautiful quality of air to be able to hold both of those truths and those things and see the bigger picture all at the same time and see that wholeness. And uh, I had a reflection recently. Um, so if you don't know me, uh, I am... I'm going to say I'm, I have I've recovered from a concussion and I'm going to claim that. Yay. And it's been about two years. And so I've been in all sorts of concussion, like support groups and stuff like that on Facebook. And a few weeks ago, people were talking about, like, how do I hold this? Like compassion for where I'm at right now and like let go of the old life that I had while also holding like hope for the future. Like, how can that even be possible? And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. That's like a huge topic and more that I wanted to like share on a Facebook post to people. But yeah, that's like can be a really strange thing to, to get into. And like when I had the concussion, um, when it first happened, I, I couldn't understand that either. Like it was, it's been such a learning process over the past two years and a little bit to be able to Hold when you where you're at in the moment. Have compassion for yourself. Give yourself like give yourself those hugs like Nina does, and that love and like under, accept where you are in the moment, um, knowing that you maybe can't do as much as you want to do, and that could be like whether it's a concussion or you're dealing with, you know, any of the other things that could possibly happen that are hard to go through at the time in life. There's lot, all sorts of them, um, but still know that like. And I guess the interesting thing about the concussion is like, there's a possibility that you may not get better and that you'll be there all the time. So even when I started trying to refer to it as that old concussion, but still acknowledging that I am still experiencing it now, like, how do I do that even? And that was only in the past few months. But the more that I kept practicing that, I, I can say that I'm healed now. Like I've gone to two music festival type events in the past two weekends back to back. And I mean, I'm tired. <laughs> and I think any normal healthy person would be tired from that also. So it's, uh, yeah, what's what I am realizing though, like, oh yeah, I'm a really big introvert. So maybe you won't see me for a while <laughs> to like honor that part of me just more opportunities to come within myself. And it's not a bad thing where I get to integrate the experiences that I had, come back into myself, be more internal and um, can, you know, come back out into the world again. I'm sure it won't be that long, but I do need a little bit of me time first. After being at one music festival, I can say as a healthy human being, I needed a couple recovery days. So yes, after two, like that is okay. I'm celebrating your healing because um, I know that it was such a long journey for you, but I have been so blessed to witness um, both of you be such powerful um people to honor where you were at, yet also take all of the action steps towards creating what it is that you consciously wanted to create in terms of your health, in terms of your ability to do what you want to do. So that has just been such a pleasure to witness. And I think the answer to what the person in the concussion group was really looking for is what I was alluding to is being multidimensional and being able to hold more than one perspective at the same time and understanding that we can have the human experience and we can have that zoomed out experience and our consciousness can actually flip back and forth between two or even hold both at the same time with practice, like you were saying. I like calling that being a multi-dimensional ninja, being able to like ninja between those dimensions. And I, and I think it's uh, uh, something that it's really fascinating for me about considering what you're sharing about moving between those two perspectives or multiple perspectives is this flexibility 
And I think it comes with practice. So sometimes, you know, we're wanting to, sometimes the situation is asking us for zo to zoom out and to look at it from the bird's eye view as if you could imagine being, you know, on a spaceship and seeing the earth and seeing, um, you know, maybe how things in this ex specific experience are fitting together like puzzle pieces. And then sometimes it's about zooming in and it's just about giving ourselves permission to be fully human and feel those emotions and cry and grieve and creating space for all of that because um, we're in this human body for a reason and we feel emotions for a reason they all have a purpose and when we're trying to avoid them they don't go away they just get stepped like pushed down and stored somewhere and they're going to come out at some point so rather than them coming out at some random spontaneous time but creating opportunities where we can feel them is so important, but then also like having that flexibility to zoom out and to zoom in and maybe while even while in that human experience of super deep grief and emotion, maybe grieving a relationship or a loss of a career or a transition in someone's life or a person that's passed away you know, being in that deep, deep grief, but still perhaps being open to the possibility that there is some gift in that. And you may not know what the gift is for a long time, perhaps. You may not be able to see it at that moment. Oftentimes you don't. Oftentimes I, in my experience, I don't know the gift in that moment, but some sort of like glimmer of faith or trust that it is, that there is a gift in it is what helps me to stay the course and to stay, um, yeah, to stay in my faith or my, my trust while feeling it all. Absolutely. And I think that faith and trust comes when we really add to the cache file in our brain, the comp organic computer system that it is, that says in the past, when shitty things have happened, eventually I found the gift in it. And it actually brought me what I needed, whether that was to shift directions or to learn a lesson, I received something from it. I was able to become a bigger, badass, multidimensional ninja from even having to go through the healing from whatever processes was involved. And when we really keep in mind our, our accomplishments and that perspective of it always in the past has worked out for me, then it's easier to do that in the moment, right? But it does take practice, like you were saying. And I will say from my perspective, I've actually always been too good at the zooming out. I was always really tuned to that more galactic cosmic perspective of like, everything is fine because it's all working out for me and I can see it from the highest levels and it's all cool. And my human would be going, okay, but that fucking sucked. Right? My human would need the time to process. And my biggest learning over the last, I would say, decade and a half has been how to come into and honor the human, reparent the human, and make sure that I am processing things now as they come through. There was a backlog that I had to go through when I got to about my late 20s. And I was like, wow, I didn't process any of my childhood traumas and stuff like that, because I was able to zoom out and be like, it's okay, I'm going to grow up and everything's going to be amazing. <laughs> Um, but then when I when I got through that backlog, I had to learn how to be present with the emotions as it was happening and to have the feelings and not be afraid of them. Because I used to be uncomfortable with that emotional expression. And it wasn't until working with the elements and really diving in with the element of water that I started to feel the amazingness of diving in with all of those feelings, whether they were good or bad, good or bad. Like there's no labels that we can actually put on them, but you know, the ones that feel icky versus the ones that feel awesome. That is such a skill to learn how to feel your feelings and like actually feel your feelings. And it's an ongoing process, I think too, because I think, you know, there's this window of tolerance that we all have for what feels safe to feel. And if we go too high out of that, like, high then that's like a hypo arousal hyper arousal that can create anxiety and if that becomes too low it can uh, be a hyper arousal which can create depression and everybody's some people have a window of tolerance like this and some people's is like out of the screen you can't even see it and it just depends on 
you know, where we, the work that we've done and um, the safe spaces and that we have have to explore feeling our feelings and so many different factors, I guess, but it's uh, such a process, I think, always to be continuing to expand that window of tolerance so that we can feel more and more all the time and just basically like allow things where i like to be is where things are happening and i'm arising and it's rising and witnessing it and i'm like okay this is happening what is it telling me what is the opportunity where can i go from here how can i do i like this situation i'm kind of always like reflecting on like do i like this do i not like this do i want this to happen again and all of it's okay because it's just information and it can also help us show where we need healing and things coming up and but so many people are just it's not it wasn't safe for like so many of us to feel our feelings growing up so many of us were told like stop crying you shouldn't feel this way no more crying anymore like that that was a big one that I was told a lot to stop crying and I really try to let my daughter <laughs> allow the tears to come and so we were just away again this weekend and um she was really feeling it. She's also an introvert like me and was like tired and didn't want to get ready for daycare this morning and didn't want to be rushed and all of that. And I totally get it. Um, so she had many, many, many meltdowns of running away from me and crying and sobbing on her bed and like yelling at me to go away. But she actually wanted me to be there. But she's like, I'm not listening to you and I'm not talking right now. And she didn't know what she wanted. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna, you can like have this whole experience and know that it's okay and it's safe to feel your feelings it's just tricky when she starts to get like where, where she starts to be like maybe mean with her words or hitting and things like that like such a balance of learning how to feel your feelings without projecting them and hurting other people at the same time um but i mean she's four so she'll get there eventually and i'm just so happy to give her the safe space to be able to experience the full range of her emotions and not judge them as good or bad because that's stuff that we learn um you know so many people like anger isn't safe to feel because that wasn't safe to feel at home or else you know one emotion or the other wasn't safe to feel so creating spaces where these emotions are safe to feel is uh, key to well, everything, I mean, I want to see it's key, but it's just one of the pieces because all the elements work in balance with each other and we have to balance our emotional body, our physical body, our mental realm, like all of these things, our spiritual realm. And when they're all in balance, that's when we can create this beautiful <sighs> unified field, synergy, synchron, I want to say synchronicity, I'm not sure, but um, everything just flows so much more easy. And then we are open to these and infinite possibilities and we can just create mm, so much amazingness from there. Mm. The word that's coming up for me when you were sharing that, Nicole, is coherence amongst all levels of our being, amongst all of our, um, you know, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual bodies. And yeah, thank you for pointing out that there's emotions that every, you know, every person has different emotions that they feel a little bit more comfortable or less comfortable with feeling. And for me, that was anger growing up because there was a lot of anger that I experienced in the household. So when I um, was navigating that, I learned that not expressing anger was a, the best way to navigate that because if I added fire to the fire, it would just make more fire. So I was just like, okay, let's be quiet. Let's not express that anger. Let's not feel that. And so it's actually really been a process for me as an adult to learn how to create safety for that and um, welcoming that fire <laughs> in safe, controlled ways and spaces. One analogy I like to think about is that in the mountains um, nearby where we live, there are sometimes what's called controlled burns where they'll actually because you know a lot of the forest fires um that i mean probably they're not doing controlled burns right now with a lot of the fires that are happening but in the past if if there were certain sections of the forest that were um more mature and 
needed to ha be, have controlled burns, they would actually set that up so that there would be, they would, they would do their best to contain it. And then there would be certain sections that would be burned. Um, and sometimes there's certain seed pods or um, pine cones that can only open with the heat, as well as sometimes the reasons that they would do controlled burns is that there'd be uh, different types of um, bug infestations or diseases. So they would do that intentionally. And what I learned about, or the, the analogy that I took from that was that we can also create, can create controlled burns in our lives. So that to me, that means safe spaces to feel anger where maybe if I know that no one's going to hear me, like I'm home alone, I'm going to scream, I'm going to punch a pillow, I'm going to bang my drum, I'm going to shake my body, I'm going to stop my feet. And I'm going to let myself do that maybe for a certain length of time, maybe 10 minutes. And at the end, I can check in. Is there still more to express? Yes, you know, maybe set the timer for another length of time, or maybe I'm feeling okay. Yeah, that that helped a lot because I've gotten that mo moved through my body. I've processed that emotion because if we don't, then the emotion can get stuck in our body, and then that can turn into disease. It can t turn into all kinds of things where you know there's stagnancy. And so I love that analogy to starts to hold space for that emotion for me as an adult, rather than just shoving it down and pretending that it doesn't exist. And yeah, so that's been a big one for me. And I think also to just recognizing that and having so much compassion for ourselves that most of us didn't learn how to process emotion or hold space for emotion when we're growing up. And it's not at the fault of our caregivers or our parents because they didn't know either. And it's just, it's kind of been this, you know, information that wasn't passed down down this chain and what it what a powerful thing it is now that we have this knowledge and wisdom coming to our experience where we can now pass it on to our children or those I'm not a, a mom yet but I can share that with my my niece and I see my mom sharing it with her because she now has more knowledge around that so it's so beautiful to hear about both you and Aurora um, both Nicole and Aurora you you sharing about how you are reparenting uh or your your new no, new wisdom uh, the wisdom that you've embodied around emotions you are now passing down through your lineage is it's so important and so needed at this time and, and yeah beautiful to hear i love that you brought up that anger can feel really fiery because fire is the that action realm that actually helps things move. It's the transformational realm. And yeah, anger can be really tricky for people, especially when you've got a lot of trauma around anger. Either you weren't allowed to be angry or there was someone in your life who was very um, unsafe feeling when they were angry, right? So that's a whole process of healing the trauma, reparenting yourself enough that you can even hold space for your own anger or for other people to be angry in appropriate ways. Like Daniel Tiger says, it's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to hurt someone, <laughs> right? So we get to take personal responsibility for our feelings. And yes, we are teaching our children that and their emotional literacy is far higher than mine was in my 20s. But fire is um, amazing and that anger can help catalyze us to make a change, right? When I am angry it, or frustrated, to me, it means that some energy's got to move and shift. And maybe it's an internal thing. Maybe I have to shift my perspective, or maybe I just need to change the outer circumstances. And it's like the fuel that will get me to move forward. So that aligned action from the fire realm that can that can come from anger or it can come from inspiration it doesn't matter where it comes from is part of that alchemy process to turn the crap into gold there's no point in just being angry about something um in in my mind it's like okay i'm angry i'm gonna feel it sure but like i'm not just gonna not do anything for me anger is not enough to just feel the anger and then like and then we're done what will keep the anger from returning so that I can be more at peace because I prefer that state. I don't want to stay angry. That's not my jam is to then look at what was causing it and actually take some freaking action to change it. And maybe I can't change the outer world. Maybe what I need to do is accept something 
and that it needs to happen if it's something that I'm not able to change. Or maybe it's that I need to hire a house cleaner because I'm sick and tired of fighting with my husband about X, Y, Z when it comes to housework, right? Like it doesn't matter what the aligned action is, but you do have this opportunity when you have an emotion after you felt it to go, okay, what is the lesson here and how can I move forward? How can I shift and change either my perspective or my circumstances so that I can feel the way I want to feel. We have this power as conscious co-creators to take whatever that feeling was, let's call it ick for short, right? Whatever those icky feelings are, look at it and go, okay, cool. Thanks for the lessons. What I would rather have instead is, and then you use that to point you to what it is that you would like instead, right? Sometimes that is the step that people are missing. They get stuck in the anger, the sadness, the grief, right? And they're not examining it to go, okay, what is this a catalyst for? How can this move me forward? What can shift and change for here? And what would I like? So Nicole, I love that you're always going, what do I like about this? Do I like this? Do I like this? And if not, I'm I'm guessing what you fill in is what would I like instead? So what, what do you do if, a situation doesn't feel good and you would like something different instead. Kind of um, like, yeah, going through that at the moment. <laughs> um, I was, yeah, at a different festival, different, just different than what I'm used to being around. And I'm like, what would I like instead of that experience? And it really helped me realize, I'm like, oh, I'm craving deeper connection with people than what was available. And um well, that was, I feel like that's really kind of the big crux of it. And also realizing that I just need maybe also to put up some more boundaries for myself because I didn't, because after not peopling for so long because of the concussion and the pandemic and all of those things, I was really comfortable being at home and connecting online and having a lot of time for myself. So realizing how I can set event or like I can choose to attend events in the future maybe it doesn't have to be for like the whole length of time I can be there for the part that I know that I'll get the most connection with people um it's also interesting being sober and other people are not sober (laughs) and not being able to connect with people on yeah the level that I'm looking to and realizing that they don't need to fill that for me I can just you know I can find that in other areas of my life um and also finding a way to not be in judgment of that and like knowing that they're doing what they're doing and that's fine but I also have a preference and I don't need to um, subject myself to something that I don't enjoy because that's not good for anybody I'm not getting anything out of it they're probably not getting the best best version of me if I'm trying to force something (laughs) rather than you know being somewhere where I really want to authentically show up as myself and yeah So if I see that and I'm like, okay, well, I know that I want more connection, then I will actively choose, um, you know, to put myself in scenarios where I'll get that type of connection that I'm seeking. And also, so that's one way to do it, to try to change it. But then I may also look and be like, where am I already getting that connection in my life? And celebrate that and have gratitude for it, because then that brings me up to the vibration of which I'm seeking. And I'm not coming at it from a place of lack. I'm coming at it from like, wow, I already have so much connection in my life. This is amazing. And then like just even talking about this is already raising my vibration. I can feel little love bubbles bubbling up all through my body. And it is bringing me into that that vibration which i seek to experience more of and mm, thank you universe more of that please that is what i wish to experience so it's also super important to yeah that piece i think is something that maybe people often forget is like where do i already have that because then we're not coming out of it of that place of that uh just breathe that in so key, especially to manifestation and conscious creation and all that we we want to have. It's like you already have this in some way and finding that and expanding that until it fills you. And then it's easier to magnetize in more of it because you, first your vibrational frequency is higher. So you can use all your tools, your intellect, your logic, your reason, your ability to create consciously and use all of the, the things that you know how to do. 
as opposed to what she could do. This is such a great example. She could have come home from that festival or even been at it going like, this sucks. I'm not in the same wavelength as these people. Um, you know, I'm not getting the connection that I want and just being like, blah, about it. And if she stayed in that, oh, this sucks energy, she wouldn't have even thought to go into that space of, I already have connection. Where can I find more of it? Let's celebrate that. So first off, celebrating you for using your tools. Yay. I love that. I love that so much. So Nina, like, what do you do when there's something that's not feeling like it's doing it for you? Because it just, it feels shitty. Like, What's your go-to? First of all, I just want to say that I felt an energetic shift when Nicole, when you were sharing that, when you were talking about your experience and then how it was pointing you towards what, you know, recognizing what you already have in your life and going through that process rather than getting stuck in the ick. So that's amazing. Just to like, yeah, feel you speak through that. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's so empowering. And it takes us from a place of I guess, um, disempowerment and letting the external control us to choosing in that moment, like, what is the, what is the gift that I have in this moment? What can I recognize and how can I create more of this? And also that those situations can illuminate like, oh yeah, this is what I want more of because I'm seeing this contrast, contrast creates clarity. So it puts us in that position of, of stepping back into our own empowerment. And for me, yeah, even just um, recent experience that I had, I was just starting to notice like some like jitteriness or like kind of the sense of like, oh, is this anxiety? Is this stress? I'm wonder wondering what I'm feeling in my body. And rather than like being like trying like, an old pattern for me is to just blast past it and get busy and do things, get go into the, the doingness. But in that moment, I chose to go into the beingness of like feeling it, of like, okay, just cur getting curious about what it was. And <clears throat> I took myself through a process of just, you know, choosing to unplug from any programs, any influences that weren't serving my highest good, and then just connect up to source and connect into Gaia. So I was really being that rainbow bridge, just bringing the heaven and earth energies together in my heart. And from that place, then I could have the conversation with myself and go, okay, um, I was actually questioning a judgment around myself. I was like, okay, was this supportive? Was this a, well, I'll just, I'll just share what it was. I slept I was in bed for so long. I slept for like 15 hours and I was like, oh, I should be doing things. And then I was like, okay. And also um, it was my moon over the weekend and I was away and I was putting out, putting a lot of energy and I was giving and I was serving and facilitating and performing. And it's like, okay, then from that place of actually being aligned and connected, I was able to have a conversation with myself to ask, was that actually supportive? Was that um was that serving my body? Was that helping me to integrate all of the shifts that I experienced? And the answers were yes. So um, it's kind of a little bit of a tangent, but <laughs> I guess it's just speaking to, it's what came through. So I'm just trusting that it was meant to be heard by someone who's watching. And also speaking to bringing ourselves into alignment and connecting when we're having these conversations with ourselves to connect with source, to connect with the earth and to consciously just command that we're unplugging from anything that we might be plugged into so that we can, any, any external influences, any um, energies that are um, not in alignment with us, uh, something that um, kind of, a, 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 how do I say, attached to that idea is something that Nicole and Aurora you you share with me often which has been great because it's influenced me is to ask is that is this even mine and then if it's a no return to sender with love um yeah so that's always a beautiful important process that I really started to use more and more lately and it's like an ongoing thing it's not like a one and done just like I always as we know self-care isn't a one and done and we're not just getting to this ultimate 
you know, perfect life and then we're good. And we just get to sit on our lotus blossom and float around. It's very much a constant process where we're always going to be using these beautiful tools that we're collecting to um, ask ourselves, is what would I rather have instead? Or how can I connect in this moment and then have those conversations with ourselves to really kind of get what the next, to really get what the next um, right action, the next aligned action is in those situations where we are feeling that it can sometimes it's about just being with it. Sometimes it's about recognizing and letting that illuminate for us what we rather have. Sometimes it's about just being connect, like allowing ourselves to connect and breathe and feel that, feel what's happening in our human vessel. Thank you for walking us through that example. And I think I've told this story before, but it's, I feel like there's somebody that might need to hear this as well. Maybe somebody who's a mom or somebody who's been working from home or something like that. Um, you can see that my daughter is home today and she walked in cause she is, she is done with playing by herself and watching TV. And uh, she let the cat in too. And in the past, say a year ago, I probably would have gotten upset and been like, I told you not to interrupt me because you have everything you need. And, uh, you know, like you don't need any more snacks and et cetera, et cetera. And that would happen to me in my one-on-one -on -one client sessions. Cause she would knock and I would just be like, mm, kid, you have 37 snacks. You don't need any more snacks, but she, was four. So and now, and now she is five and she um, is interrupting. And this was not con congruent for me to go from a meditation, an amazing soul journey, doing belief repatterning with my client, and then go out to her and be like, right? So I had to shift. I couldn't shift her behavior, although yeah. I could work on training her over time and she's much better and she can be independent for long periods of time now and you see i have lipstick on. you got lipstick on and it's beautiful but i had to shift my internal perspective my expectation Mom, and how it was now. i'm not done talking so you got to be quiet while i'm talking okay. okay thank you um i had to shift inside so i could be congruent with how i wanted to show up for my clients and i found out that all i needed to do was put my clients in this paused state and say, okay, I just want you to feel and process and integrate and I'll be right back. And I would mute myself and I would go out and I would deal with her, just give her some attention, get her a 27th snack, whatever, 28th snack, she already had 27. And when I would come back, my clients and Nicole and Nina can attest to this happening to them when we were working together, they go, oh, something dropped in for them because they needed the space. And I realized that my daughter, Charlie, was actually co-creating with me. And she was helping me create a better experience for people because sometimes I would just go like a fire hose and we would just go and go and go and go. And they just needed that space. And so I was able to meet her where she was at, realize she was creating with me and also supporting my business, right? We weren't actually at odds at all. It was only my perception of what should be happening that was blocking me from understanding what was actually happening overall. So Erin saying she feels this and uh, yeah, maybe that story was something for you. So we work together as a team and it's very supportive. And Charlie, we're almost done, but you can play with my pendulum if you'd like, because you got to start them young with the truth testing and stuff. But I'm going to ask you to go over there off my lap so it's not as distracting. And I'll be with you in a few minutes. What one thing do you want to tell everybody? What word of wisdom? So do you see this? They can't see it. Okay. And then ask it a question, Nina. Ask it a question, Nina? Are we doing some live truth testing right here, right now? What needs to, what needs to happen? So someone asks. A yeah, question. Nina's just checking, and you can hold it up like this. Can ask, ask a question, Nina. Is it good for me to have a steak tonight for dinner? Okay, just hold it steady. That is how I have it programmed to say no. Mm -hmm. Good job, Charlie. 
Okay, now it's now it's Avon's turn. Oh, you know what? We will play with this afterwards. Now it's Nicole's turn. Nicole can ask one question live here on camera, and then and then you're gonna be done. Okay. My question is, should I have a meditation after we're done our session today? Do you do meditation? What's it going to start doing? Whoa. And that is programmed for yes. So you can't see the whole thing, but her no. head, she wasn't moving that with her hand. It was very steady. So no. amazing. Her heart yes. says no, but I think you should follow the pendulum, Nicole. No, you should not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Charlie, you're going to go sit down and I'm going to let you ladies take over. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Good job. I just wanted to say, jumping back to Nina, what you were sharing before, I'm so proud of you for like acknowledging, hearing that thought and acknowledging like, this is really true. I have done a lot because you have been yeah, so busy and you in your downtime, you definitely deserve and like rest is a birthright anyways but you definitely deserve to take that time to rest and be and fill yourself back up again because i know you've been yeah, doing so much and performing and facilitating and all of that does take so much energy to hold that space and mm, it's so important to have that uh that balance of resting and the being and the doing and all of that so celebrating you for um yeah, doing that. And also the, um, the, the is this even mine question? Oh, that like is so handy. I was trying to get back on my axis after my feeling a little bit wobbly from this weekend and definitely sent some stuff back that wasn't mine to uh, send her with love as well. And um, also, as you were speaking, reminded me how to get to the place where I am now about that reflection like I am in the moment sometimes noticing like, like I do like I said I am in the moment wondering like oh is this good do I like this and all that but sometimes I noticed I was in kind of a loop of thoughts and I'm like oh how do I get out of my mind and I really had to come into my heart and um it took a little bit longer today to get centered and grounded and on my axis than it normally does, uh, just because I was in such a different atmosphere <laughs> than I normally am. Um, so it's so important to be able to bring yourself into that heart space, into that centeredness where you do have access to all that infinite wisdom and possibility so that you can receive that information and are not just coming at things from only the mind level. The word that comes up for me when you're sharing all of that is sovereignty. It's like, okay, am I picking up on other external influences? If you are, just like, you know, creating space from that, unplugging. And um, it doesn't have to be like this big dramatic thing. It can be like, for me, like clearing my energy field and like just having this like energy, um, energy management, like these energy ma management tools it's just as much just as simple as like brushing our teeth or taking a shower and washing our physical bodies it's just like that energetically and sometimes people are like oh there's external energies and have to that it's like it doesn't really just just disconnect you know cancel clear delete and move on <laughs> and come into that vibrational sovereignty and how empowering that is to have these tools to take that um vibrational shower <laughs> and what word that I really like is um shamanic hygiene that one of my teachers Christabel uses after before during ceremony um she's my breathwork teacher um and so I've learned how to facilitate with her and that's something that she's constantly reminding us of is this shamanic hygiene of you know the same way that we would to care for our physical temples we can also do the same to care for our energies and it's like an ongoing practice and to it's so important to have those tools um, to come into that sovereignty mm, just breathe that in <laughs> energetic sovereignty that is what we're um really requiring if we're wanting to be the master alchemists of our lives right where we're not plugged into the past and what it was and our old stories 
and letting them dictate where we are today and where we want to go. So if you are, say, someone like Nicole, starting to frame things as instead of like claiming them as your reality, she started talking about her concussion that was still very much present as that old concussion. So she wasn't claiming it. So she was literally unplugging herself from the story of this being her reality, which is a really interesting and multidimensional thing that we can do to weave it back into what we were speaking about before right? Like how we can come into that sovereignty of being able to co-create our experience and direct it with our intention and our focus and working with all of those elements, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, all of those bodies and with the earth and the collective energy at the same time. So I love, I love all of this. I also want to acknowledge for all the parents out there of um, what resist, what we resist persists right and I needed to give my daughter that like three four minutes because I've been working for some of the day and she was just done she needed me and instead of pushing her away immediately just letting her be with me for a couple seconds and she's like okay now I'm full and then she just skipped right off so that was a huge lesson for me in not resisting but accepting allowing seeing what the gift was in there it was some fun truth testing and then And then saying, okay, this is what I want to now have. And that's for you to leave, right? Instead of just shoving her out. So we can, we can give ourselves permission to do that kind of thing, even though it's not what we like should do to be professional and everything like that. Cause work from home with kids is a real thing that we all get to uh, navigate in new ways. Can I share something on that note? Yeah, please do. We were sharing about um, my experience and Nicole's experience with doing one-on-one coaching with you and having Charlie present at certain times for that. And you were like, Oh, I'm sorry. It was, you know, uh, actually I do remember one particular time when you warned me or not warned me, but like you gave me a heads up ahead of time. You're like, just, you know, Charlie's home today. So she might need me at some point. And I was like, I was just in this space of like, you know what? It's all good because she, she was the inner child that came in and brought that like light inner child energy and it was always it felt like the right timing for me to like you were speaking to have a break but also to have that infusion of that lightness and that um that energy and it can we can view these situations like gifts and co-creations and i love how you framed that Speaking of turning shit into gold in those scenarios, she one time interrupted me, knocked on the door, and she was holding a poop emoji, just a little poop-shaped emoji squishy. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? She's like, here, look. And I was like, are you interrupting me to show me this toy that you've had for a year? And she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, thanks. That's not an emergency. So next time, keep it to an emergency, right? Trying to put out those energetic boundaries and what I needed. And I went back to my client and she goes, oh my God, she's telling me to look at my shit. And like, just like, it was this, aha. And I was like, oh, okay, great. It wasn't an emergency. It was her working with the energy because these little ones are so dialed in, tapped in and they're co-creators. So it can be really fun to work with them work with what is instead of rejecting it and because it's not what we perceive should be oh my gosh that's amazing and i totally had the same experience i don't remember like specifically what happened when charlie came in but i do remember that it was like the perfect integration time needed and just those moments of yeah where you probably would have kept going because that's what you do and that's okay and also it's really nice to have long pauses sometimes and just let all of that energy integrate so, so perfect and celebrating you for uh where you've come on that journey as well thank you because they witnessed me being like 
oh my God, I'm so sorry. And being like so apologetic because I was like, this is wrong. This shouldn't be, I'm not showing up. It's not good. Right. Like I was running all of those stories and programs and I got to then shift it into what kind of gift is this offering? And it is offering the gifts of integration and presence and space and allowing things to drop in and also being a better parent because the expectations, you know, I have for this four to five-year-old to be all alone for, you know, 90 minutes sometimes. I mean, that's a pretty high expectation and she rocks it. So there was so many presents inside that situation that at first stressed me out so much. And now I feel like, you know, if, uh, if she's home from school, if, you know, like a quarantine happens or if she's sick, it doesn't mean my life has to stop now because we've figured out this flow, my work life, I mean, and um, we can work together, right? It's beautiful. So I'm feeling like to wrap things up, it would be great for us to just kind of like summarize how we go through this process of turning shit into gold. Does anybody want to take it and then we'll fill some things in or I can go with it and um, I'll tell, I can, yeah, go ahead, Nina. And then I can share my process too, because maybe we each have a different process that we all work together with the same ones. What came up for me first is just to create the space to feel like, hmm, I wonder, like, what is it that I'm feeling in my body right now? My process today was to notice the body sensations. So, so often we think we approach it from a mental level of like uh, analyzing and feeling it from that space or looking at it from that space. And for me, uh, it's been a big journey to come into the body and to come into like naming the body sensations, even if it doesn't make sense. If it's like, I feel buzzing in my heart or I feel like my heart is you know, beating faster right now, or just naming like, there's some heaviness in my stomach. Um, yeah, just like that, uh, what's it called? Somatic noticing. I think is a really big piece for me close to the beginning of this process. I'll let one of you fill in now the next piece that comes to you. Yeah. Feeling the feelings for a defined amount of time. And that amount of time can shift and change depending on, on how deep you feel like you need to go. Sometimes it's put a, a timer on, like Nicole was saying, and sometimes it's just being with it until you feel like you're ready to make a shift. So giving yourself the time that you need without anybody else imposing the right time on you, but then realizing that you don't have to stay stuck, right? That you can take that ick and go, okay, what is it that I would like instead? What is this pointing me towards? And then you can use tools to shift that and your tools might be something very formal, like belief repatterning, or maybe it's journaling, maybe it's dancing, maybe it's shaking, maybe it's having a good cry and then chatting with friends, maybe it's going for a walk, but uh, doing something to shift the energy. And when we do that, I just want to be very clear, you can't always shift all the way from like grief and sorrow and pain to ecstasy and bliss sometimes all that we can do is shift it just up a little bit so that we can find more peace and relaxation in the body because that's another key is if you want to shift things is to be able to relax the nervous system where would you take it after that nicole or or deepen that talk about the nervous system yeah, that's what I was like, ooh, so I just finished a creating safer spaces course that I've been talking to these two about so much because I'm so excited about it. And it's all about um, being trauma informed. And so, yeah, to deepen, I guess, what's already been said, because both of those things are so perfect. Another thing, uh, the naming thing is super important and like seeing what you want instead is also really awesome when you're naming it so so many of us have been we're programmed because we have a reticular reticular activating system <laughs> that tells us uh points our attention into what it thinks is important so sometimes when people are invited to go within and look within the naming thing is really important but you may often go to what doesn't feel good first 
in your body and a really great practice. And, and that's like a thing that like anybody that has, has trauma will likely do. And there's lots of research to support that. So something that's really awesome is to focus on either what just feels okay in your body or what feels good. Because sometimes feeling good might be too much in that moment, but like what just feels okay, or maybe a lack of a sensation or something. Um, so it could be like my left toe my left little toe, that toe feels okay. And like focusing on those sensations and then your brain and like having that as a practice will help you start to focus on what feels good so that you can automatically start to do that all of the time, which will help you um, immediately do that. So that it's not your natural instinct to like focus on what is shitty all the time. And you can also like bring that multi-dimensional aspect of yourself in that multi-dimensional ninja where you can focus on hey my left little toe feels okay or it feels good and there's also this other part of me doesn't feel great right now and it feels like stretching or pulling or something and they can exist at the same time because i think that's such a huge thing for people um in, in the past it was for me like i could if i was feeling crappy i was all crappy <laughs> and there wasn't space to feel you know more than one thing at the same time so that's such a, I think that's such a really way, great way to broaden this and um, be able to have tangible ways to actually learn how to hold more than one thing in your reality at the same time as, and both are true. Absolutely. And I want to add sometimes um, if we need to move the energy, um, the physical practices rather than just the mental practices can be really important. And sometimes we forget because we're like, let me meditate or let me intellectualize, let me analyze out myself out of this state. But sometimes we need to literally shake, literally tone, literally cry. And we've talked about that a lot. Nina alluded to it today. So that physicalized practice as well. And we can then create some space inside of us to be able to tune into that thing that we want instead. Once we get that, this was icky, I want something else. Maybe I want to feel more ease in my body. You could take Nicole's example and say, okay, where in my body am I feeling ease? Maybe it is just in my hair and my hair is full of ease because I can't feel it. <laughs> but then we can practice expanding that feeling right? We can tap into the vibration of that feeling that we want and really let it fill all of us. You can use your imagination. You can use your breath. You can use all of your tools. You can use your hands to go, okay, I want to feel more ease instead of all of that ick. And so we're, we're practicing shifting it consciously. And then once we are at that vibration and we feel fully like that, or even just 10% more, ease in our body, even just 1% more ease in our body, then we can go on to that next step of, of just checking in and saying, how can I move this further, right? And listening to ourselves, listening to that voice when you go, okay, what do I need in this moment? And doing the thing it says, if that's water, walk, self-pleasure, right? Like it doesn't really matter what it is, but it's tuning in and self-sourcing to listen to what is going to support you in this moment. Yeah, anything else, ladies, in this process of alchemizing shit into gold? Yeah, a couple of things came up for me in, into what you were sharing. And um, one of those being, hmm, well, that, that thought's gone, but I know it's going to come back to me. I'm going to speak into another thing that came up for me. And this is having compassion for ourselves in the moment. So like being, maybe putting yourself in the position of imagining a young child for times that I've coached with Aurora, she's been like, what would you say to your niece right now? I've got a cute little baby niece, like two and a half years old. And if she came to me and she was saying, I feel this right now, or I'm afraid of this right now, what would I say to her? And then reflecting that inwardly to, to me. So having so much love and compassion to myself, uh, for myself, for feeling the feels is so helpful. It helps me tap into my heart. It helps me to, to be more um, loving and tender. And then also surrendering rather than trying to 
force it away or shift it immediately, like you were sharing, Aurora. Sometimes we can shift 1% or 10% and allowing ourselves to feel and to move the emotion. That to me is very feminine. So like allowing ourselves to feel the emotion and to move, that's the feminine. The masculine is holding that space for, for, the, for the feeling to happen within. And so I'm really allowing that kind of like that flow to happen and surrendering what the expectation is. Like, yes, we're identifying that I prefer to feel this way instead, or I'd like to, I'd like to shift towards feeling this. And then also releasing like, and it has to be like in five minutes, like just allowing the process to unfold and being patient with all of that. Um, so key. Oh, and then the other thing that I was going to share too, is what I was experiencing earlier today. Um, when I was going through that process was allowing myself to tune into how supported I am of like, there's so much support here for me, spirit, source, my ancestors, angels, guides, my higher self, like everyone's here for me. Everyone's my, my team of light, uh, my spiritual board of directors. I just um, read some, uh, an email with someone talking about that recently. And like, just love that because everybody's, everybody's holding space for me. Um, and loving me and um, it helps me to feel not so alone so it helps me to feel that there's a lot that there's a lot that's cheering me on both in the physical both in both in the non-physical which I just mentioned but also the physical because I get to remember all of the amazing people in my life that are cheering me on that I can reach out to if and when I need Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and online you know there's sometimes the people that we connect with um online can be that for us at first right there are so many strangers I love cheering on in the internet that I've met that resonate that that don't have people in real life I'm also super grateful to have beings like Nicole and Nina and all oh, the amazing other souls that I know that um, we get to celebrate each other um, in real life and online and all of those places. And yes, like the earth herself, all of our luminous ancestors, guides, like all of our star family, they are really here supporting ourselves and holding space right now. And they're celebrating us. So when we can tap into that energy of gratitude, first off for all the support and for the lessons even, right? If you take that shit and you can actually be grateful for it, your vibration is like skyrocketing into the field of gratitude where uh, like magic happens really when we are truly able to with all of our heart and soul be like I am so grateful for that crappy circumstance because it was exactly what I needed that gratitude and then being able to even level that up into celebration and it could be celebrating the lessons celebrating the shifts that you've made celebrating the support it doesn't really matter but when you can anchor those frequencies in through this process you're really taking the superpower of the silver lining into that alchemist's mastery of turning the shit into gold energetically. We haven't quite figured out how to do that on the physical. Um, once we can, though, we'll be needing to, um, <laughs> to trademark that process because that'll be amazing. We'll get there someday. <laughs> so there's so much that we could say on this topic. We talk a lot about it. I know Nicole has something else to say, but um, just as we're wrapping this up, it is just important to me right now to remind everybody that it takes practice, but I want to hold in my field the possibilities and what it looks like when you have practiced this for a while. All three of us do. It's just it's so invigorating. It gives you resilience. It gives you this power and infinite creation potential when you can stand here and be like life whatever you're going to throw at me I know is for my highest and best good and I'm up for the challenges that you're sending my way because as you grow and as you expand the challenges don't actually get smaller or or like easier they just get easier to navigate because of your resilience right? If you have more money or a bigger business or a bigger family, um, even bigger kids, right? Like the problems don't get smaller. You just get more ninja at being able to manage them. And then you can create even more gold out of more shit. 
That's me ducking away from the, the that's me ninjaing. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we want to share in closing, ladies, with all of this fun alchemizing energy? Mm, so the last thing that I wanted to share is that sometimes it still may not feel possible to actually like have gratitude for what happened in the situation and that's okay. And in those moments when I find myself there, I find a, like the wise, caring, compassionate version of me tap into a piece of that and just send love to that version of me that is experiencing the difficulty or that experienced the difficulty before. And just that is enough in those moments you don't always have to have gratitude for some traumatic terrible thing happening all the time and eventually maybe you will and that's okay but just love the person that experienced it i think like matt Kahn has a quote that says something similar to that <laughs> so love the one that experienced it and that's that's enough too i love that and that's so that's so huge and a big, big part of like what Aurora was sharing at the very beginning, not bypassing the emotion and not trying to force, trying to, you know, be somewhere where that we're really not being um, authentic and genuine about where we are in the, in the moment. But like you said, um, embodying a piece of that wise elder within us. And it's so interesting and beautiful that, um, this experience for me around being that divine mother, that elder, or that divine masculine aspect of myself that's holding space for me while also being in the inner child emotions and almost like having this back and forth and, and navigating like this dynamic of the different aspects of myself. Um, it is, it's been a huge learning process. And as I've been uh, expanding in, in navigating in those energies and playing in those energies. It's definitely been so supportive to me. So thank you for bringing that, that, uh, medicine to this conversation, Nicole. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about our inner parents and reparenting ourselves, but what really started coming through for me last year was also the grandparent energy right? And typically it's not our own internal grandparents, but rather like the luminous ancestors and just the energy of the grandmothers. And it's uh, that wisdom and that space holding that we can tap into anytime as well. And so that's what I was feeling when you were talking about those, that elder, it's like a piece of us and it can be your future self, but you also can seek that support from the grandmothers in your lineage and the grandmothers of the earth the 13 grandmothers and they will they will hold space for you along with Gaia and like everybody's here for us <laughs> and so that is what I want to end on it's like yes there is crap there's so much shit but there's also equal or rather infinite possibilities ahead of us right now we are at a space in um, history that is unlike any other time, we have more capacity to create shifts and changes for our own lives, um, in our businesses, in terms of our wealth. Like there are so many abundant opportunities to be conscious creators and direct the energy of creation. And a huge, huge, huge part of being a conscious creator is being able to do exactly like what we were talking about here today. It's about looking at that ick and going, I don't actually want that. I'm grateful for it, but I don't want that. What do I want instead? And then directing the energy. So once you have moved through these processes, then you get to turn your head and look to the possibilities and go dream into it connect with your highest self and say what's available for me what else is possible what can we co-create together along with each other and the earth to really just create the spaces that we want to play in like that is what is lighting me up so much right now. There is so much that is coming down the pipeline. We are just to plant some seeds, getting ready for the Soul Embodiment Summit that'll happen again in September, the second annual one. We have our amazing Conscious Creation uh, Coach Certification that'll be coming up. And of course, you can always 
join us in the playground, which is our membership where you get to try on and practice many of these embodied experiences, everything from belief repatterning to the uh, intuitive activations, working with Gaia, working with the elements, moving your body, shaking practices, ecstatic dance, soul journaling, consciously creating through intentional practices like our 21 days to align and design course that's in there. Like, oh, there's so much that we have to share um, as is evidenced by the fact that we can talk for almost an hour and a half about this and still we could go for days. So if that feels like it's aligned for you, starting tomorrow night, we're going to be um, not starting, but on tomorrow night, we are going to at 7 p.m. Mountain Time be doing a ceremony to support people in being clear channels for their intuition so that they can create an alignment with their highest self and their cosmic trajectory. So we'll drop a link into the playground if you want to join us for that ceremony and also all of the amazing material that's in the library there. So that is all for us for this week. We will be back time to be determined next week, but with another illumination chat. If you've got something that you'd like us to talk about because you feel like you would just really enjoy hearing what we have to say on a particular subject, um, let us know. You can share that in the comments. If you have been watching this whole time, so many blessings to you. We are sending you so much love and uh, just remember that you have the capacity to turn shit into gold and be this conscious creator of like the infinite opportunities that truly are available to us now. So wherever you're at in that process, we're holding space and sending lots of love. Mm.